cutting-edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. It's playtime with a difference. These pupils at a school near Paris are helping to develop a new kind of educational computer game as part of a European-wide project. Its aim, a seamless blend of learning and gaming and a blueprint for future electronic teaching systems. And it's 14-year-olds like these who provide the acid test. The developers are letting them loose on the Electra project over 18 sessions and their feedback is being used to fine-tune the game. Above all, the aim of the Electra project is to develop a methodology of learning games. It's a methodology which could, in the end, be used for all subjects applicable to French, maths, history, and then afterwards it can be personalized. If you look at the 21st century, computer games will certainly emerge as one of the most successful forms of leisure activity. Hmm. Instead of getting wound up about the increasing amount of time computer games take up in the lives of our children, school kids, students and adults as well, we want to look at the game's successes, find out the principles and forces of motivation, the basic elements of success and why they're so popular. Then we want to take the secret ingredients of these computer games and use them in learning. At the moment, the Electra game helps teach physics, in particular the propagation of light and how to create shadows. They chose physics because it's taught in a similar way at a similar age in Austria, Belgium, France and Germany. Here I'm trying to put the metal ball in the hole. The project has been coordinated by the Laboratory for Mixed Realities in the German city of Cologne. It takes a unique multidisciplinary approach, bringing together computer game designers with experts in education, cognitive science and psychology. They decided the adventure game format would be ideal for learning. We don't want to distinguish the learning process as such from the educational element, the play element and the gaming environment. So everything's mixed up in a well-integrated environment so the pupil could be scarcely aware that he or she is learning. It's something we've noticed with certain pupils who play these games. The Electra game is set in the year 2026, the date of the next solar eclipse in Europe. The player is the hero in the story. It's an adventure thriller, a bit like the Da Vinci Code. The plot generates suspense, which is the motivation to go on, to understand the secrets. And in doing that, pupils should also learn a lot. We've also created really convincing characters, like the spirit of Galileo, who appears to help the player. And these characters should create a credible and convincing feel. And in the teenage market, credibility is king. As the game was developed, a team at the University of Graz in Austria tested which types of characters would be the most effective in encouraging youngsters to keep playing and keep learning. They had to decide what the key character Galileo should look like, a cartoon or a realistic figure, whether his face should be friendly or sinister. Researchers found that the target group prefers realistic colour figures, but other aspects depend on the player's own personality. 
Electro researchers from the Center of Advanced Imaging at Magdeburg in Germany wanted to know what role emotion has in learning. So they played clips of cartoon type and realistic characters saying positive or negative words with and without facial expressions and then measured the brain activity. Anfangen. Anfangen. Applaus. Applaus. Absage. Absage. Verbrechen. Verbrechen. The emotional faces stimulated an additional part of the brain, showing that learning from emotional faces helps students retrieve information from the memory more efficiently. And a strong narrative also helps. What's interesting about the neuroscientific studies in our project is to find out if this new type of learning game, where you're plunged into a 3D environment and confronted with challenges, if this new way of learning produces more long-lasting results compared with traditional teaching tools like books or talk and chalk. Als die traditionellen Lehrmittel wie Bücher oder Frontalunterricht. Und, ähm, die Erkenntnis the neuroscience part of our project suggests that educational content wrapped up in a meaningful storytelling context can be remembered better than pure hard information. Als äh, die reine Information. On a plus que minutes. On va. As the test session drew to a close, the younger members of the research team gave their verdicts. It's interesting and there's still a bit of suspense. Galileo is a bit irritating because he never stops talking. If he's fallen behind with physics, this game could help a lot. <laughs> Their vital feedback then goes back to the developers, who tweak the game before the next series of test sessions. What they like is getting hands-on and playing with the experiments, the physics experiments. And you can really feel them reacting because it's interactive. If they give a good answer, we say, well done. And if they get it wrong, they say, oh no, I've messed up. They're real reactions because they're absorbed in the game. They like it least when there are too many explanations. In other words, they love to be able to get right into the thick of things. It's not yet clear if the final version of Electro will be released commercially. But the project's multidisciplinary approach is proving a point, that it is possible to learn a lot from a fun and engaging game.